Alright, hey, let's welcome back. We are back in Skyrim once again. We are heading into the winter. The Aretino boy is doing some ritual, trying to call the Dark Brotherhood. But who's going to stop him? Me? I'll have to find that. Uh, we have not been in this city just yet. There's quite a few things going on in this city as well. Pretty interesting city. But uh, yeah, let's head into Windhelm for the first time this playthrough. You come here where you're not wanted. You eat our, huh? food, you our city with the food, and you refuse to help the Stormcloaks. But we haven't taken a side because it's not our fight. Hey, maybe the reason these Grayskins don't help in the war is because they're Imperial spies. Imperial spies? You can't be serious. Maybe we'll pay you a visit tonight, little spy. We got ways of finding out what you really are. Oh. Every night. Do you hate the Dark Elves? Are you here to bully us and tell us to leave? No, I don't hate your people. You've come to the wrong city, then. Windhelm's a haven of prejudice and narrow thinking. Unworthy of one such as you. Um, looked like those Nords were giving you trouble. Nothing new there. Most of the Nords living in Windhelm don't care much for us. But Rolf is the worst by far. He likes to get drunk and walk around the Grey Quarter yelling insults at us in the small hours of the morning. Oh, a real charmer, that one. <laughs> uh, why would anyone think you're a spy? Some of these Nords will come up with any excuse to despise us. And it isn't just the Dark Elves they hate. They make a target of the Argonians as well. In fact, just about anyone who isn't a Nord is fair game for their bullying. Mm, that sucks. Until Sorry. next time. <laughs> Where did those dicks you. go? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's talk to uh, Jarl Ulfric. And then. Oh, what's this say? Wolf Heart of Atmora. Reigned first era for 80 to 533. Oh, interesting. You can probably make out some of that stuff. There's no glory in war. It's just something they tell soldiers so they'll risk their lives. Yeah. You're one of those Skyrim for the Nords types. Uh, I think think all folks should be welcome here. <laughs> and you're right, at least as far as I'm concerned. Don't let Ulfric or some of these other short-sighted Nords bother you. Most of us are happy to welcome newcomers. Uh, Ulfric doesn't care about outsiders? Whenever a group of marauders attack a Nord village, Ulfric is the first to sound the horn and send the men. But a group of Dark Elf refugees gets ambushed, a group of Argonians or a Khajiit caravan. No troops. No investigation. Nothing. There's a group of cutthroats out there right now that Ulfric doesn't lift a finger to bring to justice. As long as they don't threaten Nord land. Uh, what if I took care of these bandits? That's a brave offer. I'd be happy to throw in my coin behind that. You deal with them. I'll make sure you get paid. Maybe this old soldier will throw in some lessons as well. Bet, bet. Uh, alright, cool. Why help the Dark Elves? Help the Dark Elves? Oh, you must have heard me talking to Malfir. The Dark Elves live in a run-down slum called the Grey Quarter. Ulfric's content to keep it that way. I guess they think I can open Ulfric's eyes to their plight. And get him to lift a finger on their behalf. I'm trying, but Ulfric is set in his ways. For him, there's two kinds of people in this world. Nords, and the folk beneath them. Alright, uh, that dark elf called you a war hero. I, I killed guess. a lot of high elves in the Great War, and I didn't die. I guess that makes me a war hero. The Great War. There was nothing great about it. Thousands died on both sides. And where did it get us? Did we really save the Empire? Or did we just plant the seeds for Ulfric's uprising? And another war. Yeah, fair point, fair point. Show those marauders what Windhelm justice tastes like. All right, we'll do. Once one honored. of the best soldiers in the Stormcloak army. Till I took a sword to the chest. Ding. Oh, thank you. Divines bless your kind heart. Half a gold piece. Good day. 
Alright, uh, anyways, let's move on along. There we go, illusion increased to 100, yay, let's go. Alright, we're done with illusion then. Feels good, man. Uh, alright, what should we use then? It raises the, the wielder's smithing abilities, so maybe we should do that. Glass armor, let's see, 45. I think that's just what we're using though, right? Future wielding. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, obviously, let's get like, I don't even know, something in our left hand. I really would like to get um, transmutes, but I have not found it yet. That's fine though. Keep whirlwind sprint on us, and we'll probably do some destructions or something. Let's see, five. So three times five is fifteen. That would be thirty damage and a little bit more. So actually, this is a little bit cheaper to do. So I guess we'll keep that. Silda. Spare a coin for an old woman, my lord. Yeah, uh, trade me to be a better pickpocket. Up to no good, are we? I'll teach you. It'll cost you. Okay. Well, we're not actually going to do that, but I thought it would be good to just check it out. Palace of the Kings. All right. You should unload some of that unwanted gear. Head over to Sadri's used wares. Talk to the elf. All right. Uh, let's open Palace of the Kings and head inside to see what we straight answer. He's a true Nord. He'll come around. Don't be so sure of that. We've intercepted couriers from Solitude. The Empire's putting a great deal of pressure on White Run. And what would you have me do? If he's not with us, he's against us. He knows that. They all know that. How long are you going to wait? You think I need to send Bolgraf a stronger message? If by message you mean shoving a sword through his gullet, Taking his city and leaving him in disgrace would make a more powerful statement, don't you think? So we're ready to start this war in earnest, then? Soon. I still say you should take them all out like you did dead King Torig. Torig was merely a message to the other Jarls. Whoever we replace them with will need the support of our armies. We're ready to move on. Things hinge on White Didn't mean to take that out. <laughs> If we can take the city without bloodshed, all the better. But if not... The people are behind you. Many, I fear, still need convincing. Then let them die with their false kings. We've been soldiers a long time. We know the price of freedom. But people are still weighing things in their hearts. What's left of Skyrim to wager? They have families to think of. How many of their sons and daughters follow your banner? We are their families. Well put, friend. Tell me, Galmar, why do you fight for me? I'd follow you into the depths of oblivion. You know that. Yes, but why do you fight? If not for me, what then? I'll die before elves dictate the fates of men. Are we not one in this? I fight for the men I've held in my arms, dying on foreign soil. I fight for their wives and children whose names I heard whispered in their last breath. I fight for we few who did come home, only to find our country full of strangers wearing familiar faces. I fight for my people, impoverished to pay the debts of an empire too weak to rule them, yet brands them criminals for wanting to rule themselves. I fight so that all the fighting I've already done hasn't been for nothing. I fight because I must. Your words give voice to what we all feel, Ulfric. And that's why you will be High King. But the day words are enough will be the day when soldiers like us are no longer needed. I will gladly retire from the world. Were such a day to dawn. I. But in the meantime, we have a war to plan. Galmar thinks we should double our men in the Reach. A reasonable strategy. And you, Yorli? 
Right, sir. The hold of Talkreath is fairly vulnerable and blocks the only road from Cyrodiil. A good point, old friend. To be sure, my lord, I am not skilled in the arts of war or military tactics. But you're able to see the hold in the parts, and for that I'm grateful. As you wish, sir. All right, a uh, little introduction on kind of the war from the uh, Stormcloak side there, sort of. But let's talk to Jarl Ulfric. I remember you. You were at Helgen with us. Come to join the war. Speak with Galmar. He handles the new recruits. Uh, that's not why I'm here. I'm sorry to hear that. If you change your mind, speak with Galmar. What does bring you to me? Um, let's see. Let's talk to him a little bit more because... Uh, What's his face? Tolius wouldn't let us talk to him after we talked to him about the Greybeard stuff, so. Uh, how did you become the Jarl of East Eastmarch? My father, the Great Bear of Eastmarch, died during my imprisonment after the Mark Garth incident. I, his only son, forced to deliver his eulogy via letter I had smuggled out of prison, such as the love of Titus Mead for his subjects. When finally set free, I returned to Windhelm and was greeted by a city in mourning, at one with my own grief and anger, clamoring in angry voices, calling out for justice, for war, they sat me on the throne, the throne of Isgrimor, the throne of my father. I only hope I can prove worthy of that honor. All right, uh, why did you kill the High King? I killed Torrent to prove our wretched condition. How is the High King supposed to be the defender of Skyrim if he can't even defend himself? Uh, some call you a murderer. I challenged him in the traditional way, and he accepted. There were many witnesses. No murder was committed. True, he didn't stand a chance against me. But that was precisely the point. He was a puppet king of the Empire, not a High King of Skyrim. His father before him, perhaps, but not Torig. He was too privileged and too foolish. More interested in entertaining his queen than ruling his country. Hmm. And what of his widow? Doesn't she claim the throne? Indeed. Elisif has become Jarl of Solitude. Historically and conveniently home of the High King, backed by Imperial interests. But the Moot has not yet met to name her High Queen. And they won't. Not as long as I have any say in it. Do you desire to be High King? There hasn't been a true High King in Skyrim for generations. For too long, he's been hand-picked by the Emperor and given emphatic nods by milk-drinking Jarls addicted to Imperial coin. It's time we had a real High King, one of our own making. Uh, why are you fighting this war? We're fighting because we're done bleeding for an empire that won't bleed for us. Untold numbers of Nords died defending the empire against the Dominion. And for what? Skyrim being sold to the Thalmor so the Emperor could keep his throne. We're fighting because our own Jarls, once strong, wise men, have become fearful and blind to the people's suffering. We're fighting because Skyrim needs heroes, and there's no one else but us. Uh, how goes the war? We should take your march. It'll be an important pressure point on the Imperials. We'd be within spitting distance of the capital. Uh, at Helgen, they said you shouted the king to death? Not entirely true. Though not entirely false, either. Any Nord can learn the way of the voice by studying with the Greybeards, given enough ambition and dedication. By shouting toward to the ground, he had neither. However, it was my sword piercing his heart that killed him. All right, uh, we already asked him that, so let's do. I have a message from the Greybeards. It's about time they turned their gaze from the heavens back to our bleeding homeland. What do they want? They want to negotiate a truce until the Dragon Menace is I dealt have with. The greatest respect for the Greybeards, of course, and the dragon attacks are a growing plague. But. The political situation is still delicate. Not all the Jarls are fully committed to supporting me as High King. I can't afford to appear weak. I can't agree to this 
unless Tolius himself will be there. Uh, let's try it, but I'm not sure it's gonna work. Politics be damned. Alduin's returned. Alduin. Nice. Speech the world stuff. eater of song and legend. If that's true, well, it changes the situation, doesn't it? Even Tolius may be forced to talk sense in the face of such a threat. Indeed. So you'll come to the Peace Council? Yes. I'll give Tolius one more chance to quit Skyrim with his tail between his legs. Alright, good. But in the meantime, we have a war to plan. Alright, uh, so we've got them all. And it looks like you relief. Le oh no, here he is. I kind of wanted to talk to him real fast, actually. I'm not much of a strategist, but Lord Ulfric listens to my counsel all the same. Uh, what can you tell me about Windhelm? Grew up here. Cold as at Mora, but that just grows the beard sticker. Lots of history in these walls. We're trying to make some more. It's a lucky time to be alive. Um, what do you do for the Jarl? For Ulfric? Well, nothing official. Known him for years. He seems to value my thoughts, and I'm grateful for that. I don't really have a mind for war, and I think he likes having an untrained opinion from time to time. Fair enough. Alright. Travel safely. It's dangerous out there. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Alright, let's go ahead and talk to Arngear once again. Looks like uh, your old freak's already headed that way or something. Not sure. Either way, uh, let's go to uh, High Hrothgar and see if Arngear is ready then. Since they are both ready to agree to terms, it seems. Or at least talk terms. Alright, what's up, boys? How you doing? So, you've done it. The men of violence are gathered here, in these halls whose very stones are dedicated to peace. Now, I should not have agreed to host this council. The Greybeards have no business involving ourselves in such matters. Uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll get them to agree to peace. Peace? <laughs> I doubt it. They may put their weapons down for a moment, but only to gather strength for the next bloodletting. They are not yet tired of war. Far from it. Do you know the ancient Nord word for war? Season unending. And so it has proved. <laughs> but regrets are pointless. Here we are. Take your seat at the council table, and let us see what wisdom we can find among these warriors of Skyrim. Yes, let's do that. All right, here we go. Let's head in. You guys gonna head in with me? Oh, here's some boys. So, Arn Gear, is it? You know why we're here. Are you going to let us in or not? You are not invited here. You are not welcome here. We have as much right to be at this council as all of you. More, actually since we were the ones that put the Dragonborn on this path. Were you? The hubris of the Blades truly knows no bounds. Delphi, we're not here to rehearse your grudges. The matter at hand is urgent. Alduin must be stopped. You wouldn't have called this council if you didn't agree. We know a great deal about the situation and the threat that Alduin poses to us all. You need us here if you want this council to succeed. Uh, very well. You may enter. Alright, now everyone's headed out. Alright, let's follow them in. Delphine got a little messed up there, it's fine though. Alright, we've got like a little boardroom here it looks like. Looks like everyone's here already. Nice. That makes things easier. Alright, let's sit in the chair. Start these negotiations. Now that everyone is here, please take your seats. So we can begin. 
negotiate a truce. I hope that we have all come no. here in the spirit you of... you insult us by bringing her to this negotiation? Your chief Talos hunter? That didn't take long. Here, here. I have every right to be at this negotiation. I need to ensure that nothing is agreed to here that violates the terms of the White Gold Concordat. She's part of the Imperial delegation. You can't dictate who I bring to this council. Please. If we have to negotiate the terms of the negotiation, we will never get anywhere. Perhaps this would be a good time to get the Dragonborn's input on this matter. By Izmir's beard, the nerve of those Imperial bastards, eh? To think that I would sit down at the same table with that. Thou more bitch. Either she walks or I do. Hmm. Both are accurate, uh, but I don't like the Thalmor, so you're right, the Thalmor have no business here. I'm glad we agree on this. Very well, Ulfric. Enjoy your petty victory. The Thalmor will treat with whatever government rules Skyrim. We would not think of interfering in your civil war. Mm hmm sure, buddy. Ah, Skyrim will never bow to the Thalmor. Unlike your Imperial friends here. You're lucky I respect the Greybeard's council, Galmar. Legate, we represent the Emperor here. Sorry, sir. It won't happen again. Now that that's settled, may we proceed? I have something to say first. Here we go. The only reason I agreed to attend this council was to deal with the Dragon Menace. There's nothing else to talk about. Unless the Empire is finally ready to renounce its unjust claim to rule over the free people of Skyrim. I knew he wouldn't We're be able to resist. We're here to arrange a temporary truce to allow the Dragonborn here to deal with the dragons, nothing more. I consider even talking to the Empire a generous gesture. Are you done? Did you just come here to make speeches, or can we get down to business? Yes, let's get this over with. Are we ready to proceed? Jarl Ulfric. Yes. General Tullius, this council is unprecedented. We are gathered here at the Dragonborn's request. I ask that you all respect the spirit of High Hrothgar. And do your best to begin the process of achieving a lasting peace in Skyrim. Who would like to open the negotiations? Yes, let's get down to it. We want control of Markar. That's our price for agreeing to a truce. Stop yawning, Lydia. So that's why you're here, Ulfric? You dare to insult the Greybeards by using this council to advance your own position? Jarl Elisif. General, this is outrageous. You can't be taking this demand seriously. I thought we were here to discuss a truce. Elisif, I said I'd handle it. Ulfric, you can't seriously expect us to give up Markarth at the negotiating table. You hope to gain in council what you've been unable to take in battle, is that it? I'm sure Jarl Ulfric does not expect something for nothing. Yes, that'd be entirely out of character. I want in return. Wait, General, you don't intend to just hand over Markarth to that traitor? This is how the Empire repays us for our loyalty? Enough. First, let's be clear. This council wasn't my idea. I think it's a waste of time. You are a traitor to the Empire, and deserve a traitor's death. But I at least will negotiate in good faith. Since we're all here at your request, I'd like to hear what you think Markarth is worth. Hmm. Riften is a pretty fair trade. Um, see, this would give... Imperials ripped in, and it would give Markarth to the Stormcloaks. Um, Winterhold is not a super fair trade for the Imperial side, but it's good for uh, good for Stormcloaks for sure. I guess. How about Riften? Hmm. The Rift would help secure our communications with Cyrodiil, and threaten Ulfric's southern flank. Dragonborn has spoken, Talius. Markarth will be ours. 
Now we'll see if there's anything behind your talk of good faith. You disappoint me, Dragonborn. I accepted your invitation on trust in your good name. But it seems you intend to favor Alfred. I can see now that this is not a negotiation at all. I know you, Ulfric. If I hand over Markarth, you'll be ready with a new demand. You'll never defeat the Empire, and you know it. But you're willing to sacrifice thousands for your own selfish ambition. <laughs> Soon enough, I'll have you back under the Headsman's Axe, and this time there won't be any dragon to save you. As always, the Empire's fine words are worth nothing. Stop! Are you so blind to our danger that you can't see past your pity disagreement? Here you sit arguing about nothing, while the fate of the land hangs in the balance. Is he with you, Delphi? If so, I advise you to tell him to watch his tongue. He is with me, and I advise you both to listen to what he has to say before you do anything rash. Don't you understand the danger? Don't you understand what the return of the dragons means? Alduin has returned, the world eater. Even now, he devours the souls of your fallen comrades. He grows more powerful with every soldier slain in your pointless war. Can you not put aside your hatred for even one moment in the face of this mortal danger? I don't know about the end of the world, but this dragon situation has gotten out of hand. If this truce will help the dragonborn here put an end to that menace, we both gain. Remember that, Ulfric. Now, back to the matter at hand. You know as well as I do that we can't hand over Markarth on these terms. Show us bones. Where will these demands end? Out with it, then. We want compensation for the massacre at Carthwaston. You slaughtered the very people you claim to be fighting for. True sons of Skyrim would never do such things. Damned Imperial lies. My men would never stoop to such methods, even in retaliation for your butchery at him. All the blood spilled in this war is on your head. So, Dragonborn, what do you say? Um, I don't know what happened at Carthwaston, actually. <laughs> uh... I don't know, I guess Ulfric should compensate you for Carthwaston. Well said. For once you'll actually pay for your crimes. I suppose that's the fairest deal we're likely to get. It seems we may have an agreement. Jarl Ulfric, General Tullius, these are the terms currently on the table. Markarth will be handed over to Ulfric's forces, Jarl Edmund will step down, and Thongvor Silverblood will become the Jarl of Makar. The Stormcloaks will withdraw from the Rift, allowing Imperial troops unhindered access. Jarl Leila Lawgiver will step down, and Maven Blackbriar will become the Jarl of Riften. The Stormcloaks will pay appropriate compensation for the massacre at Cartwaston. You both agree to this? The sons of Skyrim will live up to their agreements, as long as the Imperials hold to theirs. What about you, Alison? Are these terms to your liking? Speak up! I'm sure General Tullius is waiting to do your bidding. I have nothing to say to that murderer. General, you've proven yourself a good friend to Skyrim. I continue to trust that you will do your utmost to safeguard our interests. Thank you, Jarl Alison. I appreciate your loyalty. The Empire can live with these terms, yes, for a temporary truce, until the Dragon Menace is dealt with. After that, Ulfric, there will be a reckoning. Count on it. Come on, Dalmai. We have a lot of work to do. I Giving up Markarth is a heavy price for this truce, Dragonborn. I hope it was worth it. Jarl Balgruf. I assume you are familiar with the Dragonborn's plan? Yes, I'm ready to do my part. Just say the word, and my men will help you spring this trap. But the difficulty remains how to lure a dragon to Dragon's Reach at oh. all. Well, that's an excellent question. 
You haven't overlooked that little detail, have you? Ah, I believe I can be of help here. I anticipated the problem. While you were arranging this meeting, I was busy in the library of Skyhaven Temple. An unguessed troll of lost lore. But the important thing is that the blades recorded many of the names of dragons they slew. Cross-referencing this with Delphine's map of dragon burial sites, I believe I've identified one of the dragons that Alduin has raised up. Uh, how does that help us? Uh, don't you see? The names of dragons are always three words of power. Shouts. By calling the dragon with a voice, he will hear you wherever he might be. Why would he come when called? He's not compelled to, but dragons are prideful by nature and loath to refuse a challenge. Your voice in particular is likely to intrigue this dragon after your victory over Alton. I think it's very likely that he will be unable to resist investigating your call. So what's this dragon's name? Ah. I'm no master of the voice like these worthy gentlemen, but it is written here in the scroll. Oda Vin, winged snow hunter, as I read it. There's one more thing we know about Arthur. Alright, uh, that's gonna be it. Thank you guys for watching this episode. Uh, we'll talk to Delphine about what she's just going to mention to us in the next part. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.